Just on a, as you look ahead to the season, ambitions for Lancashire, or, I mean, how would you sort of sum up the approach uh, for the summer coming up? Well, um, number one priority is to try and get uh, promotion. Uh, and obviously, obviously to try and win Division 2 and get the Championship. And we at Lancashire have invested an awful lot of time, effort and money in producing a stadium that's the equal of any in the world. We've spent upwards of 60 million quid on it. Uh, and we know that we have to have a team that features at the top of the tree in county cricket. Uh, last year was disappointing, obviously, getting relegated by one point. And you need to reflect on the season and think where where could we have gained that extra point. And obviously, there are many places you could have done that. But that's all in the past now, and we have to look forward to, uh, to the next four or five months. Uh, and we're hugely optimistic and very keen to do well. So that's our number one objective. Uh, and along the way, over the next three to five years, we want to establish ourselves uh, as a top three or four county championship team. Um, along the way, producing and playing as many homegrown players as we possibly can. And by that, I don't just mean Lancashire, I mean North West. Uh, so, predominantly English players, but we'll, we'll blend in one or two from outside should that be necessary. So that's our county championship aim. White ball aim is we were in finals day and let ourselves down in the semi-final last year in the T20. Uh, I think finals day is a, is a good measure of success in T20. We've been to finals day more often than any other county in the country so we want to try and maintain that record. Uh, and as far as 50 over cricket is concerned, we've, we've not performed well in the last few years. Um, we've got an added incentive this year uh, because it's going to be the last Lord's final. We'd love to, love to be there, having been one of the, the forerunners of uh, short-form cricket success way back in the 60s through the 70s, very successful in the in, uh, back end of the 80s and early 90s. So we've got a very good club tradition and record in one-day cricket. We'll finish that off. You're really well placed. That it? is how you answer one very short question. Exactly. <laughs> Just, that was my little half volley, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I th uh, you're well placed, Paul. You know, a Lancashire player, England player, commentator. You know the broadcasting scene really well. And, and, and now you're back, sort of, uh, you know, in a, an administrative role with Lancashire. How you actually see the strength of the county game at the moment? Because, I mean, daily we're hearing about how the game's trying to move on. We've got the 100 coming up. But almost how you see the strength and importance of, of the county game at the moment. Well. In a nutshell, if there's no county game, there's no England game. So uh, the England cricket team and the ECB are reliant on the counties producing quality cricketers because if you don't have quality cricketers, you don't get an international team. Uh, and it's pretty obvious that the funding for the game comes through international cricket, or certainly has done over the last uh, 15, 20 years. Um, there is a there is a, a move now towards franchise cricket, which is where the hundred ball competition comes in. That, in its own right, has been a very attractive proposition for the broadcasting rights in terms of the joint bid between Sky and the BBC. Getting cricket back on terrestrial television is obviously good. It broadens the appeal. It broadens the, the number of viewers that can see the game. Uh, notwithstanding that, of course, Sky have done a great job over the years in uh, helping to fund the, the, the game and to be where we are in the game. Um, but coming back to your question about where, where, where do I see it, I've got to be very careful that the county game isn't becoming marginalised. I get, a, I get the feeling that we're going more towards shorter and shorter form cricket. Uh, summer of 2020 will highlight that when we've got a T20 competition and the new 100 ball competition which will take up most of June, July and August. Uh, so I think from a county perspective it's very, imp very important that the county championship is allowed to thrive and that the counties themselves are allowed to thrive. Quite how that's going to be achieved I'm not sure because county cricket, four-day cricket is going to be pushed, apart from this season, which I'm really looking forward to,
ball to. Counter group's going to be pushed to the margins again. Any of you guys got a question? Josh, uh, going into the season, who would you, which players would you highlight as being particularly key? Are there any you think you could make a step up this year? Oh, well, it's a good question. Um, we've got established stars like Keaton Jennings. Jimmy Anderson's going to be playing for us for quite a period before the Ashes, which is great news for, for Jimmy in Lancashire and, and Lancashire supporters. Uh, we've got Dane Villas, a new captain, of course. Um, so he's going to form a, a, play a very important role. We've got Graham Onions. Um, but there's a whole crop of younger players of varying degrees of experience. I'm thinking of Alex Davis for, for a start, who has had two really good seasons for us. I see for me, who's had two really poor seasons for us, but he's only a couple of innings away from uh, probably knocking on the England door again. Uh, we've got individuals uh, like uh, Josh Buchanan, Brooke Guest, who you may, might not have heard of. Wouldn't be surprised if he's not in the first team uh, from the start of the summer. Um, we've got young, young Jonesy, of course, who's played for a couple of seasons now and uh, he scored a maiden century against Middlesex two years ago. So um, he's going to be there in thereabouts in the middle order. We've just signed two young left arm spin bowlers. Um, so, and, and a couple of other young quick bowlers as well, who will probably feature more in the second team than, than the first team. But I would expect it would be really good come September to be reflecting on a season where we've produced two, three, maybe even four cricketers who've come to the fore in, in the first team, and they could be one of many, and I won't name them all. You are saying about like Jimmy and Ray and team. How important do you feel they are in helping the inexperienced and the new players come in and integrate with the team and help them gain, gain confidence in themselves? How important is that? Well, it's an ideal scenario when you can introduce young, inexperienced players into a team that contains the highest wicket taker in the history of the game as a seam bowler in Test cricket. You've got Dane Villas, who's in his early 30s, who's played Test cricket. You've got Keaton Jennings, who's had plenty of experience across the board. Um, Liam Livingston, of course, who is still only young, he'll be he'll be in the frame as well. The ideal scenario is to be able to introduce two youngsters into that sort of framework because you quite rightly say they feed off the experience that those guys give them. Um, do you fancy your chances of coming straight back into the championship? Yeah, I do. I do, yeah. Um, I think what we're in is a period of consolidation uh, and a period of reconciliation as a, as a, as a unit. We've been talking about a lot of young players that we've, we've signed on. I think we, we have 11 of us in Dubai who are under 21. Um, they, you can't just click your fingers and become a first class cricketer and become an experienced first class cricketer. What, uh, what you can do though is give those youngsters some experience and hope that in one, two, three years time they form the nucleus of your next really good side. And that's what I'm hoping we're, we're on the path to doing. You mentioned the uh, 100 ball format. What's your personal view on, on that? Do you think it's all for great? Well, the ECB have invested an awful lot of time, effort and money in it uh, in the hope that it will spread the word and widen the appeal of the game. Not to people who already like cricket, but to families, mums, dads, kids who enjoy sport but maybe not have tried cricket before. And I think it's of uh, fundamental importance to the game of cricket in this country that that's a success. It's a whole new concept in terms of the teams that are playing in it. Nobody knows what they're going to be called yet. They know, they know where they're going to play. Nobody knows what they're going to be called, what the makeup of the team's going to be. Um, so it's basically starting with a blank piece of paper. And I think that it has to be a success for the success of the future success of English cricket. You mentioned uh, Dane Villas as the main captain. Um, what was the thinking behind that decision? Well, Liam Livingston was captain last year. Uh, Liam's still a very, very young man, relatively inexperienced, and he found that um, he couldn't 
difficult to call the time and effort that he needed into his batting whilst he was captain. So he thought it was in the best interest of the team that somebody else had a go, that he could concentrate on his batting. And we then thought that we needed somebody, I keep going on about youth and inexperience, we needed somebody who was experienced, was a bit more mature, uh, who was well respected, who performed well, and that led us straight to Dave. So that's why. Uh, okay. Finally, can I just ask a question as you know from our neck of the woods, memories of Liverpool and Eggbirth and you give it your <laughs> Memories of Eggbirth. Yeah. Being clattered all around the park by like Gordon <laughs> Greenwich. <laughs> Oh really? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, he got three hundreds in a weekend against us. We got a hundred at Liverpool on the Saturday. We played a Sunday league game here on the, on the Sunday, obviously, and he got a hundred in that. Then on the Monday afternoon, when they were batting again, he got a hundred in about two and a half hours <laughs> at Liverpool. So Liverpool was always one of the flattest, best pitches in the country when I played. Uh, so it wasn't a, wasn't a particularly uh, memorable place for me in terms of bowling statistics, but I always enjoyed it. It was good fun. Uh, and we're looking forward to getting back there next summer. Great stuff.